Hey, what's going on guys? Realm Gaming here, back into the video. Today's episode, we're going to be taking a quick look at Windwalker Monk for Season 1 of The War Within. This is going to be a Mythic Plus only guide, so this isn't going to cover anything with Raid, anything like that. So we're just going to be looking specifically at Mythic Plus talents and rotations. All right, getting into it, let's start with some of the pros here. So the first pro is we do have very good burst damage windows. So Windwalker Monk is going to have a very strong cooldowns and this is one of the reasons that it, that they're typically considered a good power infusion target is because they can funnel all that damage into their cooldowns back it with a power infusion and they can just do a ton of damage in a very short window we also have really good mobility we had great mobility in dragonflight but it got even better with all the monk changes that we've seen in the war within they're also a pretty versatile spec they have a lot of tools under their belt they have like ring of peace they have paralysis they have a very short cooldown interrupt and honestly, they're probably one of the better mob control specs in the game. Looking at cons, they are typically one of the more squishy melee DPS specs. We did lose Damp and Harm, unfortunately, going into the War Within. However, we did get a reduced cooldown on Fortifying Bruce, so that did kind of help offset that a bit. Another big issue with just kind of Monk in general is we don't bring the best utility. We don't have a Battle Res. We don't have a Lust. We don't have any sort of class buff. So that's typically why you never see Windwalker Monk in the meta too much is because sure, they do bring a lot of damage, but unfortunately, when you push really, really high keys, that utility ends up being more beneficial than just raw damage. We also do not have any sort of immunity, so that does kind of go hand in hand with the squishiness. And then we're also melee, and melee is just typically more prone to, you know, like swirlies on the ground, uh, frontals, just a lot more things to dodge and be aware of as a melee rather than a ranged. All right, now looking at secondary stats here, and I guess main stat as well with agility, just stats in general. Uh, this is gonna be focused specifically on the Shadow Pan hero talent tree. So keep that in mind. Uh, these, these stats will change if you do go Celestial Conduit. So we are gonna be favoring agility over everything into haste, into versatility, then critical strike, then finally our mastery. Now, one thing to be aware of when playing One Walker Monk is our mastery combo strikes. Your abilities will deal X percent more damage when they're not a repeat of the previous ability. We also have another talent in our tree called Hit Combo that synergizes with this even more. But long story short on this is you don't ever want to be casting the same spell twice back to back. So when we get into our rotation, you will notice that there is never a repeat of the same spell. So something to always kind of keep in mind uh, when you're just kind of going through rotation, it is a big DPS loss to press the same button twice in a row. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about talents here just real quick. So these are gonna be the Mythic Plus talents that we're looking at, and this is gonna be our specialization tree. And you can kind of see in orange what most people are taking. In purple or pink here is gonna be talents that are not necessarily required, but are optional. They are pretty strong. They do have certain use cases. And then we do also have some sort of dark gray here. And those are just going to be talents that, you know, maybe only a couple people have taken for a very specific, unique situation. So for the most part, we'll be focusing on the orange only. So one of your main chi spenders is going to be Fist of Fury here. So pummel all targets in front of you, dealing 3,000 physical damage to your primary target. So basically you press it. It's like a channeled spell that goes off. It costs three chi. This is going to be a very strong ability to use in both single target and AOE. Just kind of talking about some of the more notable talents here. I don't really want to talk about all these, but we'll just kind of go through and see what makes sense to talk about. So the first one I want to talk about here is Momentum Boost. So Fist of Fury's damage is increased by 100% of your haste, and Fist of Fury does 10% more damage each time it deals damage. So when you do cast Fist of Fury, you want to ensure that you're getting the full channel off. Then also at the end of the channel, your auto attack speed is going to be increased by 60% for 8 seconds after, again, that Fist of Fury ends. We also have Acclamation here, so this is a debuff that you always want to keep up on your target, and this is applied through our Rising Sun Kick. So you always want to make sure that you are tracking this in some sort of way, whether that's a weak or whatever. If you just follow your normal rotation, you're not going to have any issues keeping this up, but just to make sure you're aware, Acclamation is going to give you a big damage boost. Then you kind of see on the left-hand side of the tree, we are taking some specific talents that kind of focus around... Uh, spinning Crane Kick. Spinning Crane Kick is going to be one of your top damage dealers in a Mythic Plus Dungeon. First one here is Crane Vortex. Spinning, cr spinning Crane Kick damage is increased by 30% and its radius by 15%. Very nice to have, very quality of life talent. 
We're also taking Jade Ignition over here on the left. So whenever you deal damage to a target with Fist of Fury, you're getting a stack of chi energy up to a maximum of 30 stacks. After we use our spinning crane kick, we'll cause energy, all this stack of energy to detonate in a chi explosion, dealing X amount of nature damage to all enemies within eight yards. And it's reduced by, uh, reduced beyond five targets. Then at the very bottom, you see the damage increased by 5% for each each stack of that chi energy. So we're gonna make sure that we're using this at maximum stacks. So this is just another reason that we wanna ensure that we're getting that full channel of Fist of Fury off so that we can build as many stacks as possible. And then finally, we have Dance of Chi-Gi here. So spinning, spinning Chi has a chance to make your next spinning crane kick free and deal an additional 200% damage. It'll make sort of like a sound effect and your spinning crane kick will sort of glow when this becomes active. And when this does become active, this becomes a pretty high priority spell because it does a ton of damage. Really fun to play around. Top middle here, we have Teachings of the Monastery. Tiger Palm because your next blackout kick to strike an additional time, stacking up to four. Then one of our main cooldowns here in the middle, Storm, Earth, and Fire. So basically, you're going to have these elemental spirits that will come out. They're each going to do 40% of your normal damage and healing. And you can actually control these, kind of like it says in the middle of the tooltip there, on like which target you want them to attack. And whenever you cast this, there's going to be a, this is where I would say most of your burst damage is going to be coming from. You can also pair this with Invoker's Delight down here and gain that 33% haste from summoning your Celestial. And of course your Celestial here is Invoke Shwin the White Tiger. And that's a big part of your burst is Ferociousness, Storm, Earth, and Fire, Invoke Shwin the White Tiger, and then Invoker's Delight. So those four talents right there have a lot of a lot of synergy together. You'll see it when we get to the rotation. Uh, you're typically using those two spells kind of back to back. At the very bottom, we have Schwinn's Battle Gear. Rising Sun Kicks Critical Strikes reduce the cooldown of Fist of Fury by four seconds. Then when Fist of Fury ends, the Critical Strike chance of Rising Sun Kicks increased by 40% for five seconds. We also have another pretty strong cooldown here. Strike of the Windlord on a 40 second cooldown. So strike with both both fists at all enemies in front of you, dealing X amount of damage and reducing movement speed by 50% for six seconds. And if we look directly to the right of that, we do have Thunder Fist that comes off of that. So Strike of the Windlord grants you four stacks of Thunder Fist and an additional stack for each additional enemy struck. And then you can sort of discharge those upon your next melee strike. So a very strong ability here. You want to ensure that you're keeping this on cooldown as well. And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more when we get into the rotation. All right, then we kind of talked about earlier our mastery combo strike. So we have another talent here that kind of synergizes with that called hit combo. So each successive attack that triggers our combo strikes our mastery in a row grants 1% increased damage stacking up to five times. So this just kind of makes our mastery that much more valuable. And then we also have at the bottom here, again, just another sort of synergy with this, with that talent is Fury of Schwinn. So your combo strikes grant a stacking 1% chance for your next Fist of Fury to grant 3% critical strike, haste, and mastery, and invoke Schwinn the White Tiger for 10 seconds. So you can see just kind of looking at those two or three uh, talents there, that's why it's so important to not press the same spell twice in a row. You have a lot of things uh, outside of your combo strikes that synergize with it that might not be super obvious. Uh, let's see. I think we got a couple more things here. The bottom left, we have Whirling Dragon Punch. It's on a 30 second cooldown. And you can only use this when both Fist of Fury and Rising Sun Kick are on cooldown. So you want to make sure that you're keeping this spell on cooldown as well. And the one thing that's really nice about this is we have Revolving World down here. So Whirling Dragon Punch has a 100% chance to activate our Dance of Chi Gi and its cooldown is reduced by five seconds. So if you remember Dance of Chi Gi here, what you can do is Whirling Dragon Punch. You'll get a proc of your Dance of Chi Gi and that will do a whole bunch of AOE damage very quickly. Then one other thing that I didn't miss earlier when we were talking about Strike of the Windlord is there's another uh, talent here that sort of stems off of that Gale Force. So targets hit by Strike of the Windlord have a 100% chance to be struck for 10% additional nature damage from your spells and abilities for 10 seconds. So this will do sort of like a rot damage. So you can kind of use Strike of the Windlord to sort of beef, beef up some of your other abilities that are about to come out that you're about to use. Okay, that's pretty much it for that. Let's go ahead and get into our opener and our single target priority. So this opener here is going to be consistent for both single target damage as well as AOE damage. So you can kind of rely on this list here and then you can kind of proceed into your normal priority list after this opener is complete. One thing you'll notice right here in the middle that we just kind of talked about is Invoke Schwinn the White Tiger and Storm, Earth, and Fire are both back to back. 
That's because we want Storm Earth and Fire to utilize the haste buff that we're getting from our invokes from the White Tiger. All right, so right off the bat with our opener, we are going to start building some chi with Tiger Palm, and then we're going to get a Rising Sun Kick up immediately. We want to ensure that we're get doing a Rising Sun Kick very quickly due to acclimation. In that 3% increased damage is very strong. Up next, we'll go into another Tiger Palm so that we have enough chi. So when we kind of get down here um, a little bit later on our opener, we can have enough chi built up to do a bunch of burst damage. So then kind of what we just talked about as well, invoke Schwinn the White Tiger into a Storm, Earth, and Fire into another Rising Sun Kick to keep that acclimation buff up. Then from here, we can go into Strike of the Wind Lord. That way we can benefit from these two cooldowns as well as our big time spender down here, Fist of Fury and Whirling Dragon Punch, they can both benefit from that Gale Force that we talked about in the talent section. Then from here, that's really your main sort of opener rotation. Everything else after that kind of becomes just a priority. And this is gonna be both for AOE and single target. So starting out here with the single target priority, if you do get very close to five chi, you wanna make sure you're not over capping on chi and you wanna make sure you're not capping on energy because that's quite literally wasted damage. So your main priority is to not cap out. Then from there, we have a ton of damage that is just kind of backloaded into uh, Windlord. And, you know, we have Rising Sun Kick, Fist of Fury, all these different big cooldowns here are going to benefit through Gale Force and Strike of the Windlord. So we want to make sure that we are using that before we follow up with a Fist of Fury or a Rising Sun Kick. It's probably not going to happen every single time, right? This is a 40 second cooldown. But whenever you can kind of get these these two aligned, you want to make sure that you're following up a Strike of the Windlord with one of these whenever you can. And from there, we want to prioritize getting Whirling Dragon Punch on cooldown. Again, you can't use this unless Rising Sun Kick and Fist of Fury is on cooldown. So you're probably going to have to cast these first, and then you can kind of uh, utilize Whirling Dragon Punch. And you want to make sure that you are using this as much as, as possible. Keep this thing on cooldown. Again, this will proc our Dance of Chi-Gi. So whenever that it does proc our Dance of Chi-Gi, just make sure you're following it up with a Spinning Crane Kick. So there is some synergy between step three and seven. Back to Rising Sun Kick again. You wanna keep Acclamation up into a Fist of Fury. Again, you wanna make sure you're getting that full cast of Fist of Fury off. You don't wanna clip this in any sort of way. And that's gonna to be to Jade Ignition. And then not only Jade Ignition, but also Momentum Boost. We also wanna be keeping track of our stacks of Teaching of the Monastery. This does cap out at four. So we're gonna make sure we're getting a Blackout Kick in there before we reach those four stacks. Then just like we talked about Spinning Crane Kick after Whirling Dragon Punch, if you have the Dance of Chi-Gi buff, then if there is nothing else to do, you can always go into a Chi Burst and a Blackout Kick. Okay, now let's take a quick look at our AOE damage priority. So of course, Tiger Palm, if we are about to cap on Chi or Energy. In an AOE damage, this is really where we're gonna see a ton of value out of Spinning Crane Kick, especially with Dance of Chi-Gi. We do want to make sure that we are not over capping our Dance of GG stacks. This does cap out at two, so make sure that you are spending them uh, just before you, you know, at two stacks, make sure you're pressing this button essentially. Then from here, if you don't have enough Chi to spend on a Spinning Crane Kick, you can then go into a Rising Sun Kick directly, followed up by a Whirling Dragon Punch. If both of these are on cooldown, then that's kind of when you can get into uh, the sort of damage combo with Strike of the Wind Lord, followed up by a Fist of Fury. So what you can do is strike of the wind lord into this fist of fury and this fist of fury of course will benefit from a gale force then when fist of fury does go on cooldown we'll get schwinn's battle gear and we can use this to buff our rising sun kick critical strike and that will buff it by 40 percent for five seconds and then from there we can just sort of fill with spinning crane kick chi burst and blackout kicks just make sure when you're kind of going through this priority system just watch your chi and watch your energy once your energy starts to get close to cap just know okay this is when i need to tiger palm so you're kind of weaving a tiger palm in between a lot of these abilities here and just make sure that you are building chi as much as you possibly can and not capping energy essentially and of course we cannot end the video without saying thank you to our patrons guys if you enjoyed the video please consider liking and subscribing to the channel we'll see you on the next one